close your eyes. Imagine when you open your eyes, there won't be any colors in the world anymore. Every day, from the moment when you wake up, looking at yourself in the mirror, picking the clothes for the day, on your walk or drive to work or school, or even when you go grocery shopping, you won't see any colors around. Just shades of black and white. The thought of a future without any colors in it is pretty intense, isn't it? Colors play a huge role in our lives. They evoke emotions, inspire creativity, shape our perception of the world, and yet, color is constantly overlooked. The manufacturing of colors for dyes, pigments, all man-made objects releases massive amount of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, significantly contributing to global warming and climate change. What if I told you, in order for you and I to maintain our world in these beautiful colors, we put the life and health of many people, animals, and ecosystems in danger? The negative impact of conventional color factories are no longer behind the closed doors of corporations. If you travel to Asia, you can firsthand see rivers constantly changing colors, reflecting the trends of the industry. And that's due to the discharges of untreated wastewater containing toxic chemicals and dyes into the water. And these are just some of the consequences that our colorful desires leave behind. It's pretty ironic, isn't it? Something at such a high beauty comes at such a high cost. But this doesn't sound right. This beautiful, colorful world, this essential part of our life, shouldn't come at such a high cost anymore. So what if we started to use nature's biology systems to future-proof our colorful world for next generations? And how can we do that? One answer is to use the fascinating field of biodesign. Through biodesign, we have the opportunity to reimagine our understanding of innovation and offer fresh perspectives capable of solving complex modern problems offering a platform to build a connection among various different viewpoints, leveraging science to learn how things are, and using the lens of art to ask how they can be different. My personal journey with designing with living systems started from wondering, if nature could do it, why can't we? How can we use biodesign as a tool to shift our consumption behaviors and offer an overhaul to traditional ways of production? My curiosity in finding answers to big, complex questions started from my childhood. I was born and raised in Tehran, where you can often taste the air pollution in your mouth, leaving me with a huge responsibility later on as a designer to find a solution. Growing up, my mom was a fashion designer, always inspired me to be creative and think differently. So for the longest time, I thought design alone was capable of offering that solution. But actually practicing in this field, something always felt incredibly missing. Until I realized the answer has always been in front of my eyes, it's been in those little jars that I used to take from the ponds or in the seawater that I used to collect samples from. I'm talking about a fascinating microorganism called algae. Then and there, I started my first biodesign research, collaborating with algae to invent the first photosynthetic living textile. A garment, a shirt, that would be living and alive while being worn on your body. And it would live through purifying the air around us. That means instead of carelessly throwing your clothes in the corner of your dark closet or into the washing machine, now they need to be taken care for. A living garment that dependent on how it's taken care of could flourish or die all in pursuit of finding answers to the question of how can we use biodesign for behavioral change? In a world where garments are living, dependent beings, what would they make us do or what would they prefer us to avoid? 
that was just the beginning of my realization of the massive potential that designing with biology has to offer. Marrying nature systems with design as a fresh approach to introduce new possibilities for the future of living and manufacturing. New ways of uh, building our environments, interacting with objects, making materials, and last but not least, new ways of reimagining the future. Through that research, I became fascinated with using living textiles as a visual cue for users to become more conscious about their environment. To get a deeper grasp of how their daily habits impact their surroundings, and to encourage building a more meaningful relationship with your second skin. The field of biodesign is full of unimaginable surprises. Instead of working with humans, now we collaborate with microorganisms that have their own agency and an unlimited potential in addressing some of the most complex issues of the time. My epiphany moment that instigated the next chapter of color exploration started from a happy accident at the lab. While I was working with algae to make the photosynthetic living textile, one day I returned to my desk and I found something that would normally ruin my day, and an intentional contamination. A petri dish of my algae had somehow been invaded by fungi. That means scrapping the sample off, starting over a painful process. But that coexistence had created a beautiful tapestry of colors in my petri dish, rich oranges with flecks of blues and violets poking through. In that moment, I saw the extraordinary potential that these tiny microorganisms had manifested in an stunning display on my petri dish. Standing in front of my desk, looking down at this beautiful, uh, colorful uh, picture, in that moment, I knew the future of color is alive. The future of color grows instead of being manufactured. It's designed by living systems like bacteria, fungi, and algae that have been a part of this planet long before humans evolved. They exist on the surface of your skin, in the soil under your feet, in the waters that you uh, swim in. They're an essential part of the bread that you eat or the wine that you drink. They are everywhere you can think of. And our lives? depend on them for practically everything. Coincidentally, I wasn't alone making these discoveries. A few miles away, another mastermind was building a strong bond with another kind of microorganisms called bacteria. My now research partner, Sarah Graham, was busy putting microbes to work to biomanufacture pearls, saving aquatic life, while another unintentional contamination dyed some of her samples a bright color. All done by microbes. And once again, this left us with a question of, if nature could do it, why can't we? Soon after, we joined forces, getting the smallest lives on the planet to make the biggest impacts. Two images, two realities, two possibilities. One grown, one manufactured. One regenerative, one non-renewable. One reimagining the future, one drilling in the past. Welcome to the future of color. In our current research, we are offering a whole new world of possibilities for making colors. We partner with nature to manufacture the building blocks of tomorrow's high-performance, clean colors. Microbes, the tiny powerhouses of nature, are at the heart of this innovation. Using living organisms as factories of future, we are now creating the next generation of 100% sustainable colors in a circular system. Instead of using non-renewable and toxic petroleum-based uh, resources in environmentally exhausting and labor-intensive processes, we can now grow color at the lab in just a couple of days. In order to build a clean future, we need to consider all aspects of our proposed solutions. We need to build circular systems into our manufacturing steps. 
How do we do that? Like any other living creatures, microbes need to be fed too. We take what's considered as waste, engineer it as a food for our microbes. By doing so, we can divert huge volumes of waste from landfills and pollutants from the air, breaking them down into nutrients for the flourishment of our beautiful living colors. These colors are not only visually stunning, but also dynamic, responding to their environmental changes and uh, interacting with their surroundings in unique ways. The potential of biofabricated living colors goes beyond sustainability. They offer a whole new world of creative opportunities. Imagine clothes that change color according to your mood. Architectural structures that respond to sunlight in vivid transformations, or paintings that evolve over time. These living colors have the capability of transforming our living environments into breeding works of art, blurring the boundaries of design, science, and nature. The future doesn't seem so far away anymore. We are already feeding waste to microbes to produce colors. We are standing at a cusp of a color revolution, the one that starts with biofabricated living colors. By harnessing the power of microbes, we can now introduce a future where uh, colors are not only a visual feast, but also a testament to our commitment to environment and building a greener, more sustainable future for next generations. So, instead of moving towards a world in black and white, I want you to close your eyes and imagine a world full of vibrant, living colors.